So in this video, we're going to talk about diffusion resistance. And diffusion resistance is the last piece of the puzzle uh, for the circuit model of the diode that we're trying to create. So we're trying to decompose a diode into a set of capacitors and resistors uh, that at least are approximately valid uh, for small voltages. And so in this video, we're going to be focusing on the resistor part. And specifically, we're going to take a look at what's called the small signal resistance, uh, small signal resistance, or differential resistance. Essentially, um, we know a resistor acts like a resistor, um, or a resistor is defined as something uh, where if you increase the voltage by a certain amount, so you increase the voltage by a certain amount delta V, the current is going to increase linearly by some amount delta I. And so you can plot this graphically if you go delta V, delta I, delta V, delta I, uh, and this line will have a slope of 1 over R, or the resistance. And for an ideal linear resistor, this line is perfectly straight. But for a diode, we know that it's anything but a straight line. We know it looks kind of like this exponential. Uh, I mean, the ideal diode equation has an exponential uh, dependence on voltage. So e to the V over thermal voltage minus one, if this is the voltage applied to the diode and this is the current through the diode. But if we're at some voltage, uh, say we're at some voltage V naught, and we're only interested in small perturbations or small distances around this V naught. So say V naught plus delta V uh, to V naught minus delta V. Well then approximately uh, within this region, this looks kind of like a straight line. You know, not exactly, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a stretch, but you know, if, if the voltage is small, this looks kind of like a straight line. Now it doesn't intersect the, uh, the zero axis, it doesn't at all, so it's not, it doesn't behave like we would expect a regular resistor to behave, but it has the same kind of property in that if we increase the voltage by some amount delta V, we'll get an approximately linear increase, uh, which is proportional to um, the voltage. We'll get some increase delta I. So if we make this increase delta V, we'll get some increase in the current delta I. And this is what's called a differential resistance. So this is what we're trying to um, get out of our diode. It's the next best thing to an actual resistance uh, because it kind of acts like a resistor so long as you don't go very far away from the diode's DC voltage. So how do, we, uh, how do we find the diode's differential resistance or the diode's small signal uh, resistance? Well, uh, you might guess that we do exactly what we've done in previous videos. We apply a certain delta V and just plug that into the equation that we have for current and see what delta I results. And then we divide the two, delta V over delta I. So we actually have an equation already for the current uh, in the diode, so there's no need to do really hardly any work at all. Uh, we know that the diode current is equal to some reverse saturation current density times e to the diode voltage divided by the thermal voltage minus one. So if we're interested in delta ID, uh, then we need to take, we need to subtract two voltages, uh, VD plus delta V over two and uh, VD minus delta V over two, or we need to subtract the currents that result from this. And why did I choose plus delta V over two and minus delta V over two instead of just plus delta V and zero? Um, well, that's because I've already done this and I know that uh, it'll be much easier to make approximations if we, if we go this route. So if, if we do that, if we just plug in these two voltages uh, and subtract them, we'll get the two different expressions. So the reverse saturation of current density multiplied by uh, the first expression is just 
e to the vd plus delta v over 2 over phi t minus 1. And we're subtracting that from e to the vd minus delta v over 2 over phi t minus 1. And this is a, bit, a little bit ugly, but uh, as in previous videos, uh, don't, don't worry too much about it because the negative ones cancel and we can factor out this common e to the vd term or e to the vd over phi t. So we get i set times e to the vd over phi t. Uh, and then that's all multiplied by e to the delta v over 2 phi t minus e to the negative delta v over 2 phi t. And you probably smell what's coming next. Uh, we're going to turn this into a cinch. But before we do that, uh, this term out front is approximately just the diode current ID. Now we're missing a we're missing a minus one here uh, if we really wanted to be exact. But if the if VD is large enough, at least compared to phi t, then the two are approximately the same, and certainly. Uh, a minus one is, isn't going to hurt us too much here. So we get ID times two cinch of delta V over two phi T. And while we're in the business of making approximations, let's just make another uh, actually unreasonable one. Uh, let's see, let's say if delta V is much less than two phi T, and remember phi T is about 26 millivolts. So this is saying that delta V is less than or much less than 50 millivolts, or round about 50 millivolts, which may or may not be reasonable, um, then delta I is approximately just the DC current times two times delta V over two phi T, because cinch of X for small X is just approximately X. Works the same exact way as sine, which is one of the reasons uh, they called this function cinch, just because it behaves so similarly uh, in, in a lot of ways. So it's, it's really appropriate. So if we cancel the twos, we'll get, this is just equal to ID times delta V over phi T. But this is the expression that we're looking for. This has delta I and delta V. And so if we rearrange things to get delta V over delta I, we'll get that that is just equal to phi T over ID. And this is the Diffusion resistance. This is exactly what we're looking for the whole time. And it's such a simple expression. All it depends on is the DC current through the diode or the current uh, at that diode's bias point. So this is fantastic. Uh, this means that we have a very easy way of calculating the diffusion resistance, at least approximately. And recall that this is the underlying assumption we made. Uh, that delta V is much less than 2 phi T. And it's not always reasonable, but even if it isn't reasonable, it's sometimes so useful to have an approximate value, even if it's really a really, really bad approximation, that this is still useful anyway, um, just because linear circuit analysis is so incredibly useful. So in this video, we calculated the diffusion resistance RD, and we did it fairly easily just with some simple math. Uh, you could have also used derivatives to find this differential resistance. However, um, the using the derivative won't give you a sense for um, how bad your approximation is. And using this method where we deal with cinch instead of a derivative, we immediately get uh, an expression that tells us what what assumptions we're making about how small delta V really is, which I, I personally think is, is much more valuable. So uh, thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them down below, and I'll see you next time.